Um, sorry for my <laughs> two month absence from uh, making videos. Um, I've actually got a couple of interviews lined up over the next few days, uh, as well as a video on how to make money on DeFi uh, that I promised to do a long time ago, but uh, I've only just got to now. Um, but today I've got an interview with uh, Jerry from Gather. So we're talking about what the project's been up to since my last research video, as well as what they've got coming up over the next few months. Now, uh, I think as I alluded to in my video, I really like the idea of Gather. Um, and it's actually going to play through in a couple of the interviews that I'm going to do. Um, basically, one is about Gather, so that makes sense. The other is about uh, internet censorship and um, in that in a lot of ways, uh, blockchain technology is looking at rewarding um, you know, platform, for platform providers uh, in ways uh, that aren't just revenue. So, you know, you know platforms like YouTube or Twitter uh, aren't so much, I guess, at the, at the behest of their advertisers. Uh, whereas in a, in a blockchain based you know, project like Gather, it means that people can uh, use mining, um, you know, user resource mining to get monetize, to monetize their site rather than being reliant on companies that can dictate uh, what they can and can't say uh, on their site. So, and that's obviously quite uh, relevant at the moment because I uh, recently also recorded an interview where we talked about uh, how blockchain might be able to help with elections, but I've decided to not put it up because it talks about the US election and channels are being sort of shut down because uh, they're commenting on it. So I decided to censor. Uh, so look, I mean, um, this is gonna be a, about a 20, 30 minute interview. So I hope it makes sense for those of you who are interested in the Gather project, or those of you who are interested in a cool project that's looking at monetizing the internet in a way that currently isn't really being done uh, in a new and exciting way to monetize the internet. So we can sort of sh shift this landscape from an advertiser and marketing model uh, into a user-driven model, uh, then stay tuned. Thank you. All right. I'll try, yeah. Thank you. All right, well, um, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today, I've got uh, Reggie from Gather. Uh, and we're just going to have a brief chat uh, pretty much to update everybody about what's been happening with the project since I made my research video. Um, so it's very, very good that he's been able to um, spend a bit of time to, to come and chat about the project, what um, has happened since uh, it launched and then what um, they've got coming up over the next couple of months. Um, so uh, yeah, it should be an interesting one. So yeah, thanks for joining um, Reggie. How's, uh, how's things been going over in sunny Dubai? Uh, first off, thank you for having me, Luke. It's a pleasure to be back and to chat with you. Um, sunny Dubai is actually kind of cold right now. Uh, well, not definitely not as like um, cold as Canada and other places, but yeah, winter is uh, nice and uh, COVID still COVID, but yeah, all good. We well, can't can't escape it apparently. Um, but onto onto brighter things. But I mean, uh, then again, I mean, I will segue into one thing. I think. Um, the weather in February in Dubai, generally when I've been there, has been some of the most pleasant weather you could get in the world. Like clear skies, low humidity, 25, 26, 24 degrees in the sun. And it's just, it's, it's very pleasant beer drinking weather, um, <laughs> as, as far as I remember. Um, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> But let's talk about, um, all right, so what, to, just, just give us a brief rundown of uh, what the Gather team has been up to since uh, the token launch. So um, obviously we'll, I'll, I'll briefly just, I guess, remind people about what happened from a pricing perspective. So pretty strong launch. Um, and then as, as we saw uh, private sale unlocks, we saw basically a, a mass dumping of the token on market. Uh, and anyone who looks at the chart would be able to see that it was, I'd probably say not expected, but I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty indicative of the kind of market that we had between September and November, uh, where people were just basically token flipping. Um, and we ended up here with a process, a, a basically a, a cycle of every month, there would just be this massive sell pressure, uh, which has now sort of disappeared uh, relatively. Like the price has quadrupled from its lows um, I mean, in it, one point it was 5x from its lows or 6x from its lows because it got pretty damn low on the last private unlock. Um, and then we've seen some good news come out. So why don't you just run me through 
um, sort of what you guys have achieved uh, between Token Unlock and today? For sure. So yeah, you know, we had a very good launch. Um, you know, knock on wood, the market uh, was was quite accepting. But yes, the the, the inflation that came in from the from the token supply was quite heavy, more than expect, oh, not more than expected, but um, the absorption wasn't that great. Uh, but yeah, now the, you know, after the last token sale unlock, things are a lot better. Um, can't talk too much about that, but yeah. Um, you know, since then, since I think we, we uh, listed on August, September 14th. Yeah, September 14th we listed. Since then to now, there's, 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 there's just been a hell of a lot that's happened. I mean, from partnerships, from development perspectives, from hiring, um, from clientele, from expansion, from wallet growth, from all you know KPIs we track and everything we're doing as a company, from the internal reports I see, uh, there's a lot. You know, and to just give you a highlight, um, between September to let's say December, um, we came out with our UI demo. We onboarded so many different partners. Um, you know, a lot of them was you know adding them as a payout token within Gather itself, right? Like, hey, once you come use Gather, you can get paid in X Y Z token. Be it um, on top of my head, Chromia, DIA, for example. Um, and then you know, like with Chromia, we went out and we'll be monetizing their uh, DApps going forward as well. It's, it's just an example of partnerships. Mm. We came out with more real-world partnerships as well. One of them being Laminar. Uh, so that's basically an infrastructure play for non-crypto companies. Anyone become, can become their own streaming provider, um, you know, and not have to rely on, let's say, YouTube, etc. So it's good for content creators. And why the reason why we're working with Laminar and they want to work with us is that by using Gather for their uh, backend, if you would, for, for their uh, decentralized cloud, they don't have to worry about AWS, GC shutting them down at some point, right? Mm. And on the other side, they're able to monetize free users, right? So they they don't have to charge their own users upfront. Um, and that's because they're using Gather to monetize or their users would rather. So, so you know, those are some recent examples uh, of partnerships that have happened. And yeah, development fund, we did a UI demo with a bunch of our partners, they came, they integrated uh, Gather. So the disclaimer was showing up for a bunch of different partners, people went and played around with the admin panel, et cetera. They gave us feedback. Okay, you know, we'd like this, we don't like that. This should uh, be faster, et cetera. Can we get this feature? Um, and yeah, uh, from other technical uh, perspectives, mainnet's close by, a couple of months away. Uh, we wow, have some new uh, hires. It's gonna be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. I think, you know, one, one, one approach we take very differently from other projects or companies, if you will, um, we go out and we market right now the product that is being built based on the MVP we had. And the reason we do this is that we don't want to have a product and then go and spend another four months trying to market that specifically, right? That's going to be a problem. That's going to burn time and burn capital specifically. So that's why we go and do that go and do that now. And that's why we sign LOEs with all these companies. So that when we do launch, okay, hey, we have 360K revenue in the door day one, mm -hmm. right? With all these big, like we have one blue chip already working with us. We have all these other smaller companies working with us as well. Um, and what was it? 350, 360 websites we've accepted uh, to uh, monetize with us as well. Um, and, you know, some, some other things that are coming up right now, we're going to be, I, I can't, uh, tease it too much, but we're, we're talking with a pretty large streaming company right now mm. uh, for them to use Gather. And the conversation, what I can say, how it started was they wanted to monetize a subset of their streaming platform, uh, which is branded as something else to monetize their free users, you know, who they earn revenue because they're watching ads. And that's a perfect fit for Gather. Instead of watching ads, you know, you can just use Gather to monetize and your users will, will uh, opt in further, right? They, they'll be more engaged. And then it just went further from there. That's a really big one for us uh, going forward. It's a very clear cut use case. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good, I, I would say, high level summary. All oh, right, and hirings. We've been we've been pretty heavy on the hirings in terms of uh, developers. Uh, that takes time to get good developers in the door that aren't charging you out the wazoo. It took us about two months from start to end uh, from the hiring cycle, you know, from the negotiations, from their, um, you know, going out of their probation periods or sorry, their notice periods, et cetera. And then also the other departments, marketing, et cetera. Right, community growth and what's going on there. We've got, you know, I, I think Arabic, English, Japanese, Korean, 
Chinese, Indian, uh, Dutch recently as well. All these communities have opened up and they're, they're seeing tremendous you know, growth month on month and compared to when we launched, it, it's been very, very good um, from engagement rates, all of that. Wallet growth is healthy as well. It's positive week on week, month on month. I believe from when we launched, we are at about 100, 120% wallet growth as well. Uh, we're now planning to go really deep into Russia specifically. We see that as a very, very key target uh, market for us. Um, yeah. Uh, so what is your, uh, what is the growth rate of wallets? Um, you know, on your, from your KPI reports? One second, sorry. KPI uh, number of wallets is 104% from October, uh, October. From October 2020. Oh, so it's doubled in what, three, four months? Three months? Yes. yes. But we, the, that doesn't include when we actually listed. Um, we only started tracking these um, about three weeks afterwards initially. Um, that's the initial number of wallets on, on a month uh, from October itself. We're talking about number of transactions. Uh, we're up number of transactions on a week on a week basis. Uh, I don't have week on week on me for me. Uh, we're doing about 60, no, 46.9% um, for number of transactions. Yeah. Uh, and so that's growth, versus, right? That's, that's number of transactions. Yeah. So, number okay. Growth. Number of, tra no, no, number of transactions uh, compared to October, 2020 is 46.9% versus November, 2020 is increased by 13.6%. So all the numbers are going up. Mm. And I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if you can cut. If you want to cut this or not, but I mean, if we even look at the volume here versus October 20, 2020, it's seventy four percent higher versus November twenty twenty is nine. You mean trade volume? Trade volume. Yeah, it's good. No, no, I mean that's that's fine. I mean, historical trade volume isn't something that's like a, a secret. I mean, anyone could look that up. <laughs> like, yeah. it's yeah, not. Um, it's uh, it's not a, a state secret. Um, yeah, I think the only thing we can't, the only thing we can't really talk about is, uh, Price. is, is no, is, is you saying this is definitely going to 10 X this year or something. Um, <laughs> I mean, that would be, Imagine. that would be, that would be, that'd be, you know, that'd be Justin Sun territory. Um, that would, that would. So, um, so we can't do that. Yeah. So yeah, da daily volume from uh, October 2020 compared to the, the period now is up by 74% versus November 2020 was 99%. So, th so th just to just to uh, sort of, you know, get things moving for brevity is that so things are obviously growing, right? So you've got, um, you've obviously got more partnerships. So, you know, um, you know, different different projects that get users on board with gather, uh, have the ability to have their users rewarded in their own token um yep. like uh, is it um decentra what's the, what are your main partners there the token partners for payouts yeah or just project uh chromia dia ferrum decenter um, decenter is an interesting yeah decenter is an interesting one because they're essentially building a, a, a browser right yeah so part of what they're going to be doing is using gather to monetize their browsers and increase it's tied into their own token value as well, which is uh, their the personal data value. Mm. Or payable so, data I mean, value, I guess correct? that's similar to how Brave works, correct? Yes, uh, but they're, they're more, Brave still has an, you know, pay to play advertising model built in as well, right? And, and a tipping kind of model, uh, which is something I don't really agree with personally. Um, whereas Decenter is using data collection and putting, using your personal data as value here. Right. Whereas Maybe. obviously Brave, Brave's um, value prop is more that they they don't take your personal data. Well, I mean, debatable. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll get stuck into that. But yeah. uh, okay, fair enough. And and so obviously, and then you've got partnerships both from a, from a business uh, revenue model um, like as in that's actually going to be bringing value to the business. Um, and let's talk about your, um, how your staking is going. Cause I know that you've set up master nodes. So how is, uh, how is that process going? It's been fantastic. I mean, uh, that the, the kind of response we got was just insane. Uh, to put it in perspective, we opened batch one maybe four weeks ago or something like that. Right. And we were like, let's, let's just open with 10, 10 master nodes. 
and see what the demand is, right? So for people that are not familiar, essentially, mass nodes are one of the biggest backbones of Gather because they provide um, the storage and compute required for a lot of the you know, um, enterprise clients for us, essentially. So they, they pay out in USDT and they pay out in Gather as well. So it's a very, very big part of um, the, you know, our ecosystem. And I think you know, not, not, not a lot of projects actually uh, pay in USDT and that, that's coming from the revenues from generated from cloud services. But yeah, so we're like, okay, let, let's open up 10 master nodes and, and see what the exact demand is. We can come up with any interest form. We just opened up and see, wanted to see how the community would respond to us, right? Mm. Um, long story short, we had to open up 16 master nodes. We, as soon as we opened it up, I think within five minutes, they closed out the first batch. The shared master nodes closed out in 15 minutes. And this was, this, this happened with like an hours of no, uh, you know, one hour's notice to the community itself. So the response was insane. So. With the second round, we were like, okay, we need to open up more batches. We did an interest form and we saw, okay, there was about seven, seven or six million uh, gather uh, in, in terms of interest. So about roughly 20 master nodes or, or around there. And again, the same story happened again, sold out. People came, you know, DM, hey guys, you know, I wasn't in time. I was on my computer, blah, blah, blah. Couldn't get in, can you help me out, etc." Same thing happened. And now we're opening up a third batch. And as of last night, uh, when I last checked it, the interest form itself is at 9 million tokens. And that equates to about 36 master nodes. Right now, we're only gonna have 80 master nodes capped when we go to mainnet. Um, yeah. That's just for supply and demand purposes. So, you know, we, we don't have an imbalanced ecosystem, essentially. So you'd already be so, at 50 by the, time of, by the time you get to this third release. We have, 30, uh, we have 39 now. And this oh, would right, be- 40. Uh, yeah, we, we have 40 right now, and this would be around 33 more or 31 more master nodes. But it almost be kept out. Essentially, yes. Mm. And this, this round was also priced higher uh, in terms of the collateral uh, required. Mm. Uh, and that just, the interest is there. And we're, we're going to open it with now, I would say maybe uh, five, uh, seven days. Let's just take seven days safely. Yeah. So well, the, 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 the response has been very, very good. This video will be out, I'm hoping, um, probably today, hopefully, since I haven't actually done content for this channel in about uh, <laughs> a month and a half. Uh, yeah. Purely, I mean, as you probably have known, and I'll, I'll exp I would have explained this in my intro to this, but um, I've been too busy doing actual work <laughs> to, to, to chill out and do YouTube stuff. It's just been, um, it's been incredibly busy and anyone involved in the crypto space, um, and in anyone involved in any of the groups that I'm in would know that we've just been, um, Killing yeah, you. we've just been very, very busy. There's just been a lot of stuff going on. There's just been an incredible amount of work and that's, that's been good. And, um, and I think, um, I mean, this is a segue from what we were just talking about, but I think that, uh, I think it's only going to get busier for the next 12 months because, um, you know, from where we're at, it's like, we haven't even really seen, mass retail participation yet no um, yet, no i mean it's going to be hard to get the canary in the coal mine you know cab driver giving you crypto tips because no one can catch cabs anymore because of covid but it's um <laughs> it's uh i think that we're still you know i think there's still a good few months left before we need to be worried about that mass retail fomo um and i think that there's a thing. lot of good stories to be told um many many more than there were last year sorry our last bull run which was 2017-18 and i think uh the reason it will probably run harder and longer is because we've got um i mean we did talk about this offline earlier but there are projects aren't asking for ridiculous amounts of money anymore um like i would i would argue that that gather for example has probably achieved a lot more as far as um, building a business and adding value to the world than 90% of crypto projects um, that existed in, you know, sort of 2017. Um, and, you know, because obviously, you know, looking at generating actual real world money and creating value for customers and all that kind of stuff, which is really important when you run a business, uh, which is one of the reasons why my, my, my video, my research video about Gather, I was so positive about it. But, um, you know, we, but also the other thing is that you managed to do that while only raising like what sub 1 million, you didn't even raise a million bucks. No, um, no, I think no. seven, 700 or something. Nine, nine sixty. 
nine, just under a million. So just 960 million, Warriors, yeah. you know, we're no longer in the days where, you know, a project is going to raise 50 million bucks and that's just par for course. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, I can't, I think it would be physically impossible for there to be another EOS or another, um, you know, Telegram, another ton. I mean, well, Tom didn't get off the ground, but, you know, I, I can't foresee there ever being um, community acceptance of projects that need that much money. And that also means that when, you know, when there is a bit of a profit taking, that the volume isn't so ridiculously high. So obviously for EOS, there was, you know, multiples of $1.6 billion in sell pressure when that hit its top. And that's what drove it all the way back down to two bucks. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're, if you're building an ecosystem, you're building a project, you're building a business, right? Mm. Reach your product market fit, go there, prove your validation completely, right? Which we have partial at this yeah, point, yeah. in all honesty, we do, um, because of the MVP that was built and we, we got those customers on board, et cetera, and everyone signing up. Once you get that full product val uh, validation, raise what you need more then. Why would you go and raise like these, these obsc obscene amount of money? without anything done with yeah. just a thesis right what what are you what are you going to do with all that money it, it does not cost that much money to run to get an mvp and onboard initial set of users it just does not no matter who says what to you it's a bunch of bullshit. yeah exactly. straight up i, I mean i'm sorry but if this I, offends any other product founders or but whatever, i mean i mean they should probably the be offended for raising too much money but i mean i completely agree it's not a it's not a it's not necessarily the done thing but i think the advantage is that the market is no longer accepting a projects like that. Like if someone comes out and is like, Oh, this project's raising, um, you know, in excess, if, if it goes over 15 million, um, people would be needing to see a really strong, you know, cap table of investors and they'd yeah. need to be seeing like a really strong, like it would need to be super strong to warrant that amount of cash. It would need to be a groundbreaking project. I don't it think would. the market is at all, um, accepting of, of projects that are sort of, you know, haven't really built anything and are raising more than a couple of million. Uh, I just don't see it being a thing anymore. Um, I, even, I would agree. And it's a good thing. hundred percent. It's a good thing. Yeah. So I think, I think that we're in a, I mean, like not only is the market in a good position uh, over the next little while, but I also think that it means that you uh, and the project are in a good position um, obviously to get both um, obviously for as far as getting, um, you know, adoption to get people looking at the product and using it, but then obviously picking up supporters, customers and things like that. But so the notes, so I'm just going to end that segue and we'll talk. So we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll just, just talk, go back on point. Um, so the nodes are going well. Um, we've got another release coming up soon. And, uh, and what's, what's sort of on the horizon for you guys over the next, um, over the next couple of months. So end of Q1 is when we're targeting mainnet. Um, I think from here to there, it's going to be, we really want to focus on adoption. Now, one of the, so if we talk about gather as a whole, just as a, you know, very quick recap, there's basically three different verticals um, with the first two being the most important. The one that sells extremely easily, whereas we don't need to do any outbound marketing unless we want someone specifically is the alternative form of monetization for websites and applications, right? You integrate gather via the SDK or uh, using, you know, uh, what do you call it? three lines of code essentially, and you put it in your website or app or whatever it may be. And when your user comes to your website, they provide consent, a very small amount of processing power is used to power the gather ecosystem. It's being resold onto enterprises, it's being uh, used to secure the chain, etc. And then the uh, publisher or application owner gets rewarded. They, they earn revenue, right? It's a very, very clear cut, very simple, uh, use case and it really does sell itself. The second part is the cloud enterprise services where a lot of the, let's say USD revenue, which then ties back into the token. And then, you know, that's where value accrual, a lot of value accrual actually comes is another thing we're pushing on for adoption as well. Um, and that's something we started, we plan to, we wanted to do that first, but after feedback, um, we switched it around. We focused more on publishers. And now we're going to the enterprises. That's what we want to do for the next three months is that, hey, this is the test net. This is what we have. We want you to use it. We want you to sign up with us. We want to sign more contracts. We have some already, but we want to push more, a lot more on that um, going forward. In terms of publishers, I think for us, landing the streaming client will, 
that's that's big. That would that would be the next blue chip for us. Mm. Uh, that would be our second blue chip. It would it would be, it would be extreme validation um, going forward. And uh, yeah, just just mainly it, w- it would be about uh, the, these two aspects. I think signing up more partners or more clientele, um, and going live having the whole ecosystem working in one harmonious motion. And right, a few other things that are coming up, I, I think are a little more um, low prior, relatively low priorities. We were releasing a governance, part of the governance module within the next couple of weeks, where basically anyone to kind of recap, if you have one token equals one vote, right? Um, you can come and vote on, on certain proposals across 50 gather, uh, 50 bucks worth of gather to make a proposal. Uh, whatever it may be, right? Whatever proposal gets passed. And that's where mass node holders actually come into a large, um, they're very important in that, in that whole uh, process because they hold a lot of tokens and they can pass proposals or, or, or not, right? Let's say, you know, we make a proposal to change Gather's name to, I don't know, Bodhi McBoatface, or just as a random example, right? Which is, you know, it's not unprecedented. <laughs> no, it's not, right? Um, it would then go to the Gather Foundation itself, which is you know external members and internal members from the ecosystem who would then actually vote for that to go in or not. Because the we as we've seen these governance governance mechanisms can be gamed very very easily, uh, especially when you you know it's like one vote one one token equals one vote. So that's why we have a secondary layer, which is again another voting process. So that first module is actually releasing. Right, so people can come and make test proposals, etc. This is what we want to do. We want to make this change, etc. And then we see how that kind of works. And master node holders or anyone who holds a token will be able to come to the dashboard and actually pass the vote, reject the vote. Uh, yeah. So that yeah. that's one really important thing I think uh, that's coming out, along with something called the community hub. Yeah, and then obviously the other major piece is uh, you've got your main net quarter one this year. Yes, sir. And which will be uh, very one. interesting. Yes, it's going to be. I'm, I'm excited. I'm and you're going to have a lot, by the sounds of it, you're not going to have any problems locking up a significant amount of potential liquidity um, into gather nodes. Not at all. I don't, I don't yeah, think so. So I'm pretty sure I, that, I, I, what would that, so on, let's just say on average, quarter million per node, 80 nodes. I mean, that's, that's a fair chunk of supply, of, of available supply. Uh, so from 80 nodes, nodes, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, roughly, if yeah, you just take 250 times, what is that? Uh, 82. Uh, 20 million tokens, right? Yeah, locked up. Locked yeah, up. Which is pretty good. And then, um, and then yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one as well, because that's going to be uh, going to be very interesting. So that's going to happen within the next three months. So yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that's good, and that's going to be obviously where the rubber really hits the road in regards to, um, you know, the actual project going live, starting to earn revenue, and, yes. uh, and all those kind of things. And with the partnerships in place, um, how are you expecting that to go? Like you, I mean, I don't know if you can give. I don't know if that's public or not. Uh, have you got any forecasts on what kind of revenue you'd be looking at um, bringing yeah, sure. in around that period? Uh, so we have an updated revenue forecast from I think last year roughly because yeah. we've you know been adding partners like crazy and new clientele, but it was about three hundred and fifty something odd USD per month. Thousand, or yeah USD. Yeah, I was going to say four thousand. Yeah, I was going to say three hundred fifty-four right. US dollars a month is an impressive. <laughs> three hundred fifty-four thousand. Yeah. Yeah, which is pretty good. I mean, considering, you know, you've only raised a million bucks of the capital. Um, I mean, that would equate to, I mean, three times 12, uh, 36. It's about 4 million per year. Yeah, yeah 3.64 million a year. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty good um, ROI. And, and I know that, um, you know, that, that a portion of those funds goes back to uh, the master notes. Yes, yeah, 6% of all gross profits go back to... Uh, the master node holders in the form of USDT, USDT on top of what you earn in Gather as well. Mm. And then obviously a significant portion of what's uh, earned in USDT, USD as well is used for buyback and burns. Pro- programmatically, I have to say that very, very specifically for legal reasons, mm. uh, programmatically. Um, yeah, while, and reminder, 
just as a reminder that part, part of those funds are also settled within Gather on, uh, on markets as well. Yeah. So that's where you see a lot of token uh, cool coming back in. Yeah. Or well, value cool, rather. Any, I mean, just in the sake of time, so we keep this under an hour. Um, yeah. I don't know how long we've been going for now, but I'm, I'm going to assume it's at least half an hour. Um, <laughs> any, other, any other final notes you want to let people know about the project or if anyone, uh, if anyone hasn't seen my introductory video about how amazing the project is, uh, well, it's not, not, I guess it is a bit of a shill, but it's also um, sort of talks about what the project is. Any other questions for people who, any other sort of notes for people who might be interested in the project or anything like that? Sure. So look, we started out with a very, very simple statement, mission or problem to solve, right? Which came from personal experience essentially, which evolved into a few different things. And it was this, is that, Privacy is a basic fundamental right, right? Um, advertising is dead and we don't believe in data collection. If you support these three core facets or three values, check out Gather because we provide publishers and applications an alternative form of monetization without having to collect data from users, without having to violate their ba basic privacy um, and provide the internet a new way to make money without having to bombard users with horrible, horrible, stupid ads. Yeah, true. That's, uh, that's I think the big point. You just don't have to be bombarded with stupid ads that are targeted yeah. to you by using the information that has been, I wouldn't say stolen, but has been, you know, <laughs> sucked out of your uh, out of your browser history. And then yeah. they determine what what products you know are going to work against you the most. So that's good. Well, Reggie. Um, Thank you so much for your time. Um, and um, yeah, we'll hopefully get this out today and uh, let people know about what's been happening with Gather. Appreciate you having me on, Luke. It was a pleasure, bud. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Thanks.